You can find inspiration in some unusual places in the high desert. One of my favorite artists can be found in a trailer park in Morongo. The incredible award-winning artist and pirate, Snake Jagger. All right. Snake! Yay! Hey, it's good, good to, to see, see you. you. Yes. Now, you're going to be in the art tours coming up soon. Right. Um, you're one of the desert's legendary artists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For probably a lot of reasons. Right. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, not just the art. But um, yeah. tell me a little bit about how you got connected with the desert and then how, how you became an artist. Well, I first moved to the desert. Uh, when I was about 17, I, I, uh, I moved in with my father who lived off of Frank Sinatra Drive. Uh, um, he used to work for Frank Sinatra back when I was younger uh, for about 15 years as his personal valet. And we used to come down and visit my dad and stay at Sinatra's house, which was on Wonder Palms, which is now Frank Sinatra Drive. When I was 17, I ran away from home from my mom's house in L.A. and moved in with my dad in the desert. Uh, and that was my beginning of uh, living here and starting to appreciate the whole desert environment, you know. Okay, now, yeah. how did you become an art, decide to become an artist? I mean... Well, I'll tell you that it was, uh, it was a day when I was six years old, uh, I was watching my mom and dad, they were painting pictures. The only time I've ever seen them doing anything like that together, it was just the one time that she was painting a picture and he was painting a picture and it just, a light switch went off in my head. I just, from that moment, I started drawing and, and doodling, and and I never stopped. Uh, I, from six on, I've been drawing. It was a good way to uh, deal with boredom and stuff in my life, and uh, I just had a real knack for it, a, really, a, a real talent for it somehow. And So I started when I was young, and all through my life I was artistic, and uh, I knew that I could impress people with uh, my abilities. And uh, later in life, when I was around 28, I think, I, working in restaurant business for m many years, um, I just got a, a friend of mine built an odd-shaped canvas for me, and I painted a desert landscape on it. Like a bow tie. A bow tie-shaped uh, canvas. And uh, I was so excited to see what I came up with on that, and the, the shape just really made me go crazy. And so... That was the beginning. That was the beginning of starting to develop a look that was unique that I could call my own. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been inspired by other artists. Uh, one in particular, uh, Noble Richardson. When I was 17, I saw his artwork, and he did desert landscapes, and he did shaped canvases, uh, which just again blew my mind when I was when I was that age. So, he was a huge influence on me, working. Uh, the desert landscape in a way that I could create my own unique look. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, you've come up with a vision of the desert. You call it what, whimsical surrealism? Right, whimsical and a manicured desert. Right, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's at once recognizable, right. but yet isn't quite like any desert I've ever walked across. This is true. If I, if I had control of the world, the whole place would be a neat and tidy place, and everything would be raked. Every rock would be in its place, uh, you know. That's, Very organized. I'm a neat freak, and that's kind of, it, it shows in my work, you know. Uh, this is how I like to do but, it. But you, you really create a beautiful view of the desert, and then you tweak it so there's, there's another dimension to it or right. something. Uh, there's, there's usually something out of place in my paintings. It's, uh, it could be one thing or two or three things, but uh, it became... A thing where I did that once, and and um, I noticed how that would be something that kept people looking at the art a little more. Uh, if they see something out of place, they're going to look at every painting to see wh is it what's out of place here, what's out of place there, and uh, that was uh, a real good tool to keep people engaged in the art a little longer, so that they could look instead of just kind of seeing it and walking by. You know, mm -hmm. um, the the little things that are out of place. It's part of the surrealism. Uh, Rene Magritte was one of my favorite surrealists, and he always did these kind of simple surrealistic scenes. They weren't nightmarish like Dolly. They were more <laughs> simple things that were just you made you you know shake your head and go what you know. Right. I mean, there's there's doorways to other worlds. Right. I I like um, to tell people that the doorways 
you go in the one doorway and you come out the other doorway. <laughs> so I be, everyone asks me what the doors mean, and I, I could only say that it's, a, it's up to your imagination to decide where they go. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's everything from the doorways to aliens peeking around, cacti. Right. Um, there's, or going uh, to the beach or going to another world. Or a tomato, or a giant. A, giant. I like to do giant yeah, fruits. Yeah, what's with the tomatoes? Uh, the tomato is a, a symbol of a rich life. It it, it means yeah. uh, uh, it, part of the reason I do tomatoes is because it's one of those things you can't ever get a good tomato if you buy it at the store. No. The only way to have a really good tomato is a vine ripened tomato, and that's that's just I'm I'm kind of a natural uh, eater, and I and I love good quality food and uh, tomatoes to me represent a beautiful rich life you know a good vine ripened tomato it is but yeah they are excellent they are and then yeah. of course the rake um is that a little concession to your wanting to kind of clean up and exactly. uh, organize the desert exactly a bit? <laughs> part of the part of that has to do with the time i spent at frank sinatra's house i, re I remember uh, noticing how the cactus garden in his yard was always in pristine shape. The rocks were set just so. The cactus was set. So it, it created a scene. It was, it was nature but man-made. And the rake is, is my symbol of cleanliness, of keeping it neat, taking care of the planet, really. That's, that's, mm -hmm. It's got a deeper message uh, that we should all be kind of aware and, and that this is what we have and this is it. You know, we should take care of it, you know, for ourselves and for the future generations. Well, you've got a daughter. We, we want to leave I something behind I want her to have something, children, yes, huh? exactly. And not just a trash heap, you know. Right. Well, uh, the so trash heap's the easy thing to get. It's yeah, that's right. Keeping yeah. things keeping it neat. the way they should be. And very true. Very, very difficult. True. Now, yeah. you love to work, though, kind of in a playful way with a lot of different media um, and not just on a straight canvas all right. the time. I mean, you've got the television set right. here uh, right. where, uh, what is it, the Imperial Stormtroopers are chasing the cowboy? Yes, yeah, so that's a little bit of a mix <laughs> of the old and new. You know, it's, uh, I grew up watching TV. I, I, I like to say that I'm a little bit like Chauncey Gardner. Uh, from a movie called Being There, where he, everything he knew was from watching TV. And that's how it was with me. I didn't do a lot of reading, but I did a lot of watching TV. And so I get a lot of ideas from shows like The Twilight Zone or Bonanza or, you know, space uh, shows and things like that, science fiction. And so that's what I like to do. I like to mix up ideas, and that's what this would be here. It's kind of like watching a, a Western with with some modern thing uh, <laughs> mixed into it, you know. Yeah, cowboys and aliens. Yeah. Kind of exactly. Thing. Yeah. And, and then I, you, you get into found object uh, symbolized Sculptures, stuff like right. That, I so. like to, you know, I've found these uh, just stuff out in the desert that is just, you know, trash to most people. And uh, it's nice to be able to take stuff that's found and rusty and old and create something uh, unique and something um, entertaining, you know. It, it's... Uh, it's a good way to kind of help clean up a little bit, and I and I found that uh, it's a it's a new a new art form that I'm exploring, and I'm really having a great time with that. It's a lot of fun. I don't think so. There's yeah. plenty of material in the desert to work with. There is so much. <laughs> well, you you'd like to think. I think Bobby first has almost all of it now. Yeah. Uh, it's, if you go to his place, to see. He, you mean there's n there's no more found objects. That's what in I'm the thinking. You know, when you go there, you go. Is Bobby there anything like left? Took I mean, a vacuum and went out. But there are a lot of people in the high desert who collect fo uh, found objects. I've noticed. <laughs> which I've never noticed down in Palm Springs. Some of their yards. Uh, oh, go it's for unbelievable. Acres, yeah, so. I mean, they appreciate rust and old, funky things up here. And it's a little different down in the desert. It's not the same down in the below. Desert, yeah, yeah it, it's different. They well, don't do that there. They have golf courses golf and courses. country clubs and wild yes. communities. And it's true. Uh, this is That's not right. Quite, that you know, doesn't seem to fit into no, their decor. No. But up here, people have a real appreciation <laughs> yeah, for that, I, and I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't see these uh, uh, maybe sunny lands or no, you know, I don't or, or any well, hardly any yeah, place. Yeah. I've done a show in Palm Springs, and it didn't really go over that well. People were maybe amused by this, but they, I think most people are more 
used to my tight desert landscapes well, that, and things like thing. that. That's the one thing. This is kind of your trademark. That's my but, trademark. I mean, it's fun to go in different directions. I love that's your right. abstract work. Uh, that's right. Exactly. Uh, that taught me that abstract painting is not as easy as I thought it was. I thought every <laughs> kid, every elephant, every monkey could do an abstract. And when I tried to do it, I realized this is nowhere near as easy as I thought, and I have a full new appreciation for abstract work. But I'm sure you're going to return to it. I am going to. I absolutely. I'm dying to get back to the abstract. It's, I will have to probably break out with my abstract work in maybe another town somewhere where they're not used to somewhere seeing this kind of thing. I know, because thing. this is This what is what people, people want and they expect. When they hear Snake Jagger, they're expecting this. But I would love to... Uh, really explore abstract a lot more and get better at doing it because uh, I'm humbled by trying to do abstracts. Uh, I found out that uh, I have a, a, a great new appreciation for abstract art. I could tell good from bad even. You know, it's like I used to hate all of it, but now I, I, I really have changed my tune about that. You know? Well, yeah. as much as I love this and this vision of the desert, yeah. uh, being kind of a desert person myself, right. um, you know, I really like to see you just continue to grow and develop as an artist right. and go wherever your heart takes you. That's you what know? I, I think all artists should try new things, you know, and not get sure. stuck in one thing. You know, 40 years of doing this type of work, I did ha have a period of time when I felt burned out uh, from doing this. I, if I had to paint another yellow dot <laughs> on these bushes, if I had a nickel or even a penny for every yellow dot I have painted, uh, not to not to mention all the dots that are underneath that uh, drove me crazy. So it was fun to take some time off and throw paint and not care what happens or where it went and just mush and, and play and stand up and paint rather than sitting with a, a little tiny two-haired brush getting these little details, you know. <laughs> I love it. So the abstract, because as my eyes get a little bit you know, That's worse that. for the wear and tear. Yeah. I think abstract may be We're not something that I'm, younger, no, so. and it's uh. getting to where, you know, seeing these little details is getting a little harder, so it may turn more into an impressionist look. Well, you can do big so. dots, you know. Big you giant really dots, big yeah. That's, that's what I need to do. Sponge things. Exactly, exactly. No, actually, it, uh, the abstract sounds a little therapeutic. You know? It is, it really is. It's, uh, it's scary, to be, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, at, at the same time, it's a great freedom, a feeling of freedom and, and, and freedom of movement. And uh, I'm not used to that. I'm, I'm used to control and, and, and tightness. That whole abstract thing is, to, for me, it's a little scary, but uh, seeing what comes out of it is rewarding. And, and so it's worth the effort to try something new. Even the, even the sculptures are, are new and, and kind of intimidating for me because um, it's just not what I do every day. It's not my everyday thing to put these kind of things together. So trying to figure out what do you do, put into what <laughs> to make it look like something that it wasn't just thrown together, but it has some real ideas going in there. It has, you know? has a theme or, yeah. or a vision behind exactly. it. Exactly. It, it's, it's not, I've seen a lot of stick. assemblage <laughs> work that is just, you think, you know, they must have just picked this up from the dump and just hung it on the wall. I mean, they didn't have to try to do anything. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, having a little you know, human input into doing things like this uh, gives it l that much more uh, meaning and and, uh, and value, I think, you know. Now, now to, uh, how did you become a pirate, of all things? Uh -huh. Ah, well, I think it all, when I was young, it, it started with the Burt Lancaster movies. Okay. The Crimson Pirate, Crimson things Pirate like that. And, and, and Treasure Island and, and things like that. I mean, I've always had that inside of me. And it wasn't until the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean came out that I realized that it's really kind of who I am. I, I kind of call my own <laughs> shots. I live by my own rules. I'm here in my ship, and I'm the captain. And, and And I love that, that feeling. That's what art feels like. It's like if you can survive doing art, you have that freedom. There's no boss. There's no captain. There's no one else telling you what to do. So uh, it's kind of a part of my personality that I just kind of re-realized after seeing the movie that uh, that's kind of how I feel, what I feel like, and I, and I relate to that. Going to uh, Renaissance fairs, I, I realized that I, this is another part of me that I haven't really <laughs> let come out, you know? Mm -hmm. You get constrained by the world and by having to be a certain way in the world, but 
to be able to once in a while be a pirate, it's great. There's nothing better than that. That's true. Actually. I do this, and I know you know that well. I mean, and you do <laughs> it so well. There are pirates in the yeah. desert. <laughs> there, there are. There very are, and, and it's great. I think uh, it's a fun thing to do. I guess you know everyone has their thing. Some people want to be sports guys, or somebody want to be this or that or the other thing. But the pirate thing, everybody loves a pirate. You know, and the ladies love a pirate. You know that. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with that. You know. <laughs> from one who knows yeah okay well yeah. let's go look yeah. at a few things and uh, okay we'll let you get back to work after that great sounds good all right all right thanks Dave. yeah you bet nick jagger scene two take one all right cool yeah. so now there's no better thing than being a pirate well, start, start again okay. that shadow fell across that oh, okay okay, okay. Wait, do you want to turn the air conditioner on because he's talking yes yeah Go ahead and listen to it and let us know if we're having any trouble. Step over here to the. Uh... Okay, action from the sound. Hang on, just do a little sound check real quick. All right. Okay, hello, sound hello. Sound the same hello. as it did last time? Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, good. All right. I hope so. We didn't change anything. All right. All right. Ready to go? Sure. Now, Snake, there's nothing better than being a pirate, as you know. As I know. And yeah. uh, so, repeat after me, if you will. All right. Fifteen men on the dead man's chest. Fifteen Yo. men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Ah. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so this is my self-portrait, mm -hmm. and uh, it this was painted. Uh, I, I saw that Norman Rockwell painting where he was painting himself, looking at himself in the mirror, and painting. So I set up. Uh, an easel in my backyard and a stump of wood to sit on and had the camera set to a timer and took the photo of myself that I used to paint this and create this image of me on a beach looking out at the ocean but painting the desert. So this is my little way of having fun with that whole pirate thing and the, and the, the pirate scene. This has got my little pirate hat up here and uh, I, love, I love being a pirate. I love being a pirate. There's nothing better. You still had to paint those I still had to dots. paint those damn dots. Yeah. <laughs> God, that's all right. So yeah. much for freedom. That makes it a, an, a, a, a snake jagger for sure. When you see those bushes, you know that's my artwork. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you've got the fruit. Got the giant uh, uh, cherry and uh, got the horse here that's a little symbol from the movie um, the, the Black Stallion, which is one of my favorite movies. And, what was that? The lime? The lime and the coconut. Coconut. Then drink, drink it, it all up. up. Yeah, yep. All right. You got message, a message in the bottle. bottle of course. Yep. Yep. And some giant spiny looking sea shell. Yeah. And yeah. the little medallion from the movie The Pirates. And yeah, this is one of my favorite pieces where I'll be looking good forever. <laughs> like well, the, like you the, pulled it off. I did, yeah. It's like that uh, 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 the painting of uh, Dorian. It was, uh, Dorian Gray? Yeah, I think so. You We're, stay young. As the that's right. The painting ages. gets old and older. I, I get older and older, but, well, I, I, see, but we the can't painting see your face there. So I, well, anyone who knows me knows that's me. And so I know, but, you can but see. I, I do think your hair is getting a little, a little grayer. grayer. It's all underneath, yeah. yeah. Uh, the big 60 is <laughs> right. coming. All right. Oh. Let's go uh, yeah. check out your Check studio. out some more stuff, yeah. All right. Yeah. So how in the world do you get your paintings, which are two-dimensional, to be three-dimensional? This is just a formula that, that uh, works with these uh, new three, uh, 3D glasses. This is a new type of 3D where it's not the same as in the movies, where it's red and green mm -hmm. lens, and that the picture would be blurry until you put the glasses on. This somehow it must be polarized the lenses so that they let the light in different on each eye because if you close one eye it doesn't work right so you yeah. need both eyes but um, if you have a blue or, or black background then red will come forward and then you have the colors in the rainbow that go behind that red orange yellow green blue wow this is so, crazy and then I mean, white goes in the middle there. these snakes on medusa here really you know they pop out they They're pop like, out yeah. they weave over each other yeah. i mean and there's like shadows between them and everything. Right, I mean, yeah. It's incredible. It's got a good, a good feeling of depth, yeah. Yeah, but it also works on the on your night scene here. It turns out the that cactus. the colors in this picture are kind of work the same. You know, it doesn't work on every picture, 
it, it's, you know, some of my, I use a lot of bright primary colors, so, yeah. so that's why it tends to work a little bit on, on just about everything, but, know, but not as much on some than, than the others. Well, this one really demonstrates yeah. it well. I mean, just yeah. it does. It really does. You get that real depth of field going on That's there. right. Yeah. That's crazy. And then, so here's where I do my work. I, um, I do my painting here, and then I also do some digital work that I, I work here with my, uh, my stylus and pad working on the computer okay, yeah, that I paint on. Yeah, because you combine media. I do. Well. Nowadays, um, I'm learning new, tr new uh, tools to work with, and, and some is working with my photography uh, uh, and working on the computer, setting up pictures, painting them on a painting program, and then uh, printing them out and then finishing them up by hand. So that's another, another aspect of the work I do. You know, and so like when you get as popular as Thomas Kincaid then, you can just have your army of minions. That's going, right. Just I dab put, this. And all I have to do is sign it, and it'll be done. You know? <laughs> all right. I don't think I'll ever get to that point. I, I always like the hands-on approach and doing it myself. I, I, I prefer yeah. that. You know, it works for me. It's okay. That's yeah. It. yeah. It's I'm never, never going to be a Thomas Kincaid. I hate to say it. but Thank uh, you. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not to speak so ill good. of death, yeah. but all right. And then yeah. you, you do, I mean, you go from the desert to Medusa to the Mediterranean, that looks like Santorini right there. Right, right, I think the, actually, I think that's what that is. Uh, I did some uh, paintings for a Greek restaurant, about eight paintings, and fell in love with the idea of, of Greece and being there, and uh, it's definitely on my list of things to do in my life, to go to the Greek islands and, and to, you know, take more photos and come back and paint them again. I just love it. Well, I love Greece, yeah. You go here, you're not going to want to leave. Not going to want to leave, ever. You're right. I'll, I'll, <laughs> that'll be the end of it. You'll, uh, yeah. I'll come hang out with yeah, you. Yeah, do. Please do. Uzo. There you go. I love that it's Uzo. It's all good, you know? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Great. Good stuff, yeah. All right. Okay, okay so we'll do a tail slate, slate guys. Trail slate? Yeah. Go ahead. Call it out. All right. Uh, St. Jagger Scene 3 uh, workspace. My lip sync days, back uh, many days where I was a professional lip synker, and this is me doing Adam and. No, wait a minute. How do you get to be a professional lip synker? You, you win contests over and over, and then you have a weekly show at Zelda's Snake and the Charmers. So every week I would portray a different artist, or you know. Who, who, did, you, who did you portray? I would be Madonna, Cher. Yeah, you look just like. Yeah. Him. Oh, you should. Oh, you've got to. Yeah, I need you guys on the other side. Okay. The lighting is, mm -hmm. yeah. is terrible. You're Okay. Let's go back on that. Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. Better so. Over here. Okay. Well, I, I would be I would be different people <laughs> like Madonna or Cher or uh, yeah, talk to Steve. Uh, Diana to Ross. Diana. You know, I'd be. You Di are Diana I am Ross. So. I mean, uh, well, this would go. This yeah. would go, and I had my wig and yeah. do my whole face. I'm telling you, when I was Diana Ross. Uh, I you was still looking, got the dress? I was looking so good. I, w I went home with myself that night, I'm telling you. That was, <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's doing cheap the... Cheap date, that was. Very cheap. Doing the lip syncing was a, it was a regular thing. It was a weekly show I had in Zelda's we, uh, Snake and the Charmers. Every week we would uh, portray different people, Devo, everybody. You know, everyone you could think of. We would, Sinatra, Barry Manilow, all that stuff. You know, it was a lot of fun. A lot of those were the days. <laughs> that is a trip. It was a lot of fun. I missed you as Diana Ross. Oh, uh, you you I gotta see, I that. have to send you a picture. You you you're just gonna love that. Give me a little Madonna. Madonna, no, I can't. I to, it takes too much to drink to get back into that state of mind again. Because <laughs> it took a lot to get me up on the stage, especially dressed up like a woman. You know, that's uh, you have to have a good amount of whiskey and you have to get you do stuff like that, <laughs> like a virgin. You, you know, there you, you go. Know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, I had a lot of fun in those days. But you just had to lip sync. You didn't actually have to sing. It. I didn't. But the thing is, when you're lip syncing, if you actually sing, all the muscles work right. It, all, it looks right. right. If you're just doing this and not making any sound come out, it's not going to look like you're singing. You have to get it one millisecond before the, the song. You have to get just be just that much ahead to where it looked like it came out of your mouth. So I was really good at that. I had to do lip ups. Keep my lips Lip in shape. Huh? Oh yeah, you know when you do this push-ups with your lips. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was. Uh, How do I, you do lip ups? Lip ups. Man? Look like, like this. I you know, mean, you got to get on a, on a flat. Well, you're going like this. Now watch. Not too many people could do this. One, two, one, two. 
<laughs> you know, so my lips were in tip-top shape <laughs> in those days, and, and uh, that's what I was doing. You know, oh, I, I, and you practice and practice and practice until you get your songs right to where it looks like you're the one singing it, you know, when it's believable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a lot of fun doing that. that was, uh, those were the days when people remembered me more for the Mohawk than anything else. Uh, not so much my art, because this was right, right before I actually started getting serious about doing the art. Uh, it was, you know, uh, I had a few years of that time in the, in the nightclubs where I did that, but then around 28 or so is when I decided to stop working in the restaurant business and to see if I could make it a go of it doing art. And uh, it paid off. I mean, it paid off right away because people were responding to what I was painting. They were selling, I was selling things. and. Next thing saying? you know, uh, this is what I'm doing for a living, and that's, that's great. I feel real blessed well, about that. Well, I think your work's incredible. Well, thank so. you, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank and you uh, and I, I hope that it entertains <laughs> and makes people <laughs> smile. You know, that's my, my hope, you know. It does. Yeah. So I appreciate it. Thank, yeah. thank you, man. It's good talking Always to you. Pleasure. Yeah, I appreciate it. I think we're going to have to record some pirate music together. we got to. Though. I'd love to do that. I'd love all to right. do that. I, I got it all that. in mind. You just have some rum on hand. Oh. I always got wrong. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Love it. All right.